The Big Agnes Tiger Wall tent is one of the first tents that I considered as having a good balance between weight and space without having to use trekking poles. But it's been a few years since the Tiger Wall came out and I wanted to test it and see if it still keeps pace with all the innovations and other tents that are out on the market. Today we're going to take a look at what's good and what's bad about the Tiger Wall in order to try and answer that question. Starting off with what's good about the Tiger Wall, the big thing is the weight. It weighs 992 grams for the tent fly, the inner and then the poles. That low weight is due to the materials that the tent is made out of, as well as the fact that it's a semi-freestanding tent. And what semi-freestanding means is that you don't have a pole structure going to each back corner. You just have one pole that's going down the middle here, and you have to stake out the two back corners in order to get structural stability for the tent. The materials that the Tiger Wall uses are very high end. It uses a 10 denier ripstop nylon for the fly, as well as the floor. And then the inner mesh is a polyester, and there's a lot of mesh on this tent. Basically, the entire inner is mesh, and then you just have the nylon for the bathtub floor. The structure of the tent comes from DAC aluminum poles in a hubbed pole structure. So you have the two poles that go to the two front corners and then one pole that goes along the back down to the middle at the back end and then a brow pole that extends across the middle of the tent. The tent also comes with aluminum tent stakes they are quite small, but they are mighty. The Tiger Wall comes with some good features. It comes with pre-attached guy lines. So one guy line at the back here, and then two at the front. And that's really nice. If guy lines don't come pre-attached, I find I just don't attach them. And then when I'm out in a big storm or it's very windy, then I don't have them available for me. As well, the tent has awesome pockets. You get one pocket on either side of the head end, and then you have two pockets in the ceiling of the tent. So you have one at the head end, a little pocket there, that's good for cell phones and headlamps. And then you have one gigantic pocket at the foot end here that's just really big and great if you want to dry things or just store really bulky items like jackets. Setup with the Tiger Wall is very easy. If you've ever set up a tent before, you're going to have no problems. It uses color coding for the buckles and the pole structure, so you know that the orange goes in the back and then the white and gray go in the front. And that just makes it a little bit easier for setting it up. The fact that you have a hubbed pole structure so you don't have a separate brow pole in order to lose or try and find when you're trying to set up the tent is also really nice. I also really like the buckles that Big Agnes uses in order to attach the fly to the main body of the tent. For durability and weather, I've had the Tiger Wall out in some pretty windy and rainy conditions and it's held up no problem. It's not made to survive alpine environments or like the UK highlands. I've heard the UK highlands can have some pretty crazy weather but for most people in the conditions that they're going out in the Tiger Wall is going to keep you warm and safe. Ten denier isn't super thick for the fly material and floor, but the way technology and fabric is made these days, I have no problems with it. As long as you're a little bit careful with where you're setting up the tent, make sure you clear out any rocks and sticks and pokey things, you're going to be fine to get lots of years out of the Tiger Wall. If you do have any issues with your tent, Big Agnes has a lifetime warranty for the Tiger Wall. Before we get into the negatives with the Tiger Wall, I want to talk about some things I think are, are more neutral. And the first one is the size. So the Tiger Wall uses an asymmetrical floor layout so it's 52 inches wide at the head end and then 42 inches wide at the toe end and then it's 66 inches long. That's not a ton of room inside the tent but it is big enough that you can fit two wide 25 inch tapered sleeping pads. If you have rectangular shaped sleeping pads that are wide you're not going to be able to fit both of them inside this tent. The height of the tent and the general kind of head space is really good. It's 39 inches tall so I can sit up in here no problem and what's really nice is that the brow pole extends really really far over. And while that's really good for weather protection, you're not going to have rain coming down and getting inside the tent because of the overlap with the brow pole. You also get some good shoulder room inside the tent. Another neutral point are the vestibules. Vestibules are a good size. You can fit a pack in there and it's not going to have to be leaning up against the mesh inner, but the vestibules are a little bit hard to open from the inside of the tent. I sometimes have troubles reaching out far enough and then pulling the zipper up, especially if there's condensation on that inner fly. The last neutral thing is the price. It costs $400. That's not crazy for a really high-end tent, but it's also not on the cheap end either. You guys let me know in the comments whether you think some of these neutral items are actually pros or cons. I'd be very curious to hear what you have to say. And that brings us to what's bad about the Tiger Wall tent. The first thing for me is that there's no fly first pitch. So because it's a semi freestanding tent and just the way it's generally designed, as it comes you cannot pitch the fly first and then set up the inner inside of it. Fly first pitches are awesome if you're in rainy conditions. You can set up the fly and then set up the inner and not get the inner soaking wet. 
And the reason why you can't do a fly first pitch is that there's no way for the fly to attach to the pole structure. That's unless you get the footprint for the Tiger Wall. The footprint weighs 170 grams and costs an extra $70. But if you're going out in rainy conditions, I think it's worth picking it up just for that fly first pitch capability. The footprint comes with buckles on it, so it allows you to buckle in the fly at the tail end and then at the front end so that you can have the tent set up and then coincide and set up the inner afterwards. Ventilation is another negative with the Tiger Wall. There's no vents on it at all. I would have liked to see a vent either at the head end, ideally, or at the tail end, or even just somewhere on the tent at all, but there's no ventilation. It is a double wall tent, so if you do get condensation on the inner side of the fly, you do have the mesh inner to kind of keep all of your gear from touching the inside of the wall and getting wet. Another big negative is the material that the tent is made of. So it's made of nylon and nylon holds onto a ton of moisture. So if you have condensation or if it's raining, all that moisture is going to be held on by the nylon and it's going to take a lot longer to dry and it's going to be a lot heavier inside your pack. Nylon also stretches when it's wet. So if it's rainy or you have a lot of condensation, all that moisture is going to be sucked up by the nylon. It's going to stretch and you're going to have a saggy tent. Nylon also degrades quite a bit when exposed to UV, like from the sun. And over a decade of use, you're going to lose about 50% of the tensile strength of the nylon. So with that negative of the nylon and then sometimes having a saggy tent, I also really don't like that you can't tension the back guy lines on the fly here. As the tent sags when you're in rain or humid conditions, I'd like to be able to just tension this off and tighten up the tent so it's less saggy. Semi-freestanding tents are always gonna have some sacrifices, but if you want a tent that's lightweight, easy to use, and all around a solid option, then the Tiger Wall may be for you. Go check out this video if you're looking at the Big Agnes Q-Core sleeping pad to pair with your Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL tent. I do a very in-depth review of that sleeping pad, and while it's one of the most comfortable sleeping pads that I've ever used, there is a really big elephant in the room that makes it so that it's not my go-to.